So um, I um, started in theater and uh, did uh, my, my grandma, who just loved musicals. We'd watch musicals together all the time. She paid for my vocal lessons. So I started studying um, voice when I was 16. And I started with I had started with Letha Wayne, and she was an opera singer. So I learned opera, and we were sixteen. And I was in, <laughs> I was in the play Godspell, um, singing day by day. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't sing an operatic style, but that's where the training was. So I studied with her for almost a year and a half, two years, um, once a week. You know, it was a big deal, or every other week, it was a big deal. And then it just locally, just so you know, like, because our family, we're not fancy, you know, we're from the Bay Area and stuff. My dad's a teacher. My mom worked full time. My grandparents live with us. My, you know, we were very, very, um, we were very resourceful and very loving. And um, then I studied with Letha. I studied with Letha Wayne, then I studied with Catherine DeHaven, and she um, was a jazz vocalist, and Lloyd Carroll, who mostly did a lot of musical theater. So then I got those chops in, and then I studied with Pamela Brooks, um, who is fantastic. I met through her through a Les Mis audition. I got called back a couple times for Les Mis for the touring company in San Francisco. I dyed my hair Lucky Copper number nine to be seen. <laughs> Um, so I met her through those auditions, and then I was with a theater company, Fantasy Form Actors Ensemble, which is my my second family. I love them <sighs> very much for 13 years, maybe more. Um, yeah, I was with them for a long time, and then I would play different characters. I played like Pinocchio and uh, evil people and all kinds of stuff. Did mostly a dog, any kind of physical character they'd give to me because no one else wanted to wear the costumes or do it. <laughs> but then I studied vo voice the entire time because I, that's where I learned to place all the different voices because we had so many shows and we couldn't lose our voice. So I really spent many, many years working this instrument and singing constantly. I always tell people if they want to do puppets, don't really know your instrument, you know. So that, that would be really fan of taking voice lessons and then um, did tons of theater, you know, Little Shop, Pump Boys and Dinettes, um, Sweeney Todd twice, I played the beggar woman. Um, so just theater um, and, then, um, and then went to San Francisco State and oh, during the whole time I was always working in my community and doing plays and part of it um, when you teach, and those of you who are teachers and do outreach, you have to be resourceful. So we're constantly making puppets, making costumes, making backgrounds with no resources. So that was another reason, you know, when you go to make something or you, do, you don't have an extra kid, you have to make a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really a kid. It just looks little. It, so... I think in all my years in community service in San Francisco State studying child development through the arts, I designed my major. So I studied child psychology, therapeutic recreation, theater arts. All those things made me love people and characters and community. And seniors, I taught water fitness. So all my um, all my stuff for Granny Dot, I, I, all I did was ask the ladies in the locker room questions and they said you can have it just tell the story <laughs> that's my training life so don't feel like you know a lot of people went oh i studied you know i mean if you can go and take a study puppetry by all means do it but don't feel like if you can't afford to go back to school or if you're not in a fancy college or something like that. i went to community college you know and worked and then i went to san francisco state i mean it's up to you to create that education, you know, and like Jen, you know, kind of found it when you just stumble onto it, then just see people that you admire, you know, um, you know, my hero, like everybody else is, everybody has different heroes. My hero was my dad actually. And uh, mm -hmm. as an artist and stuff, but you know, Jerry Nelson and you know, his characters were fantastic, but you know, 
Ronnie Burkett does incredible character work and artistry with his things. And you know what I mean? There's inspiration everywhere. So just study everything. <laughs> so you, you went to college for all those, for child development and stuff. Um, um, yeah. Therapy. And then after that, what, I, what was next? Okay, so, oh, after going to school, I worked at Mel's Diner. Uh, <laughs> very, very great. I worked at Mel's Diner. I worked at Tony Roma's Place for Ribs. But then I did all that. Um, I worked with Fantasy Gorm Actors Ensemble. I did a lot of theater. And I still taught, like, three or four after-school programs at Walla Creek and Pleasant Hill at the YMCA. So I've, I've been a gypsy pretty much my whole life. <laughs> Weighted tables. I did Beach Blanket Babylon, which is the longest running um, cabaret show in theater history in San Francisco. And that's basically dancing with lots of amazing hats. <laughs> like if you were the can-can, you'd actually wear an actual garbage can on your head. So we'd come out with the city and we do, I did Dorothy um, from the Wizard of Oz and um, Madonna. And um, then I worked at Disney World. I worked at the Adventures Club, um, but which is no longer there. But that was, again, we did major characters there. I did um, all the female tracks. And then I did the Hoop De Doo Review. And then I did a lot of Streetmosphere. And then I got involved in the theater out there. And I worked... Um, I did the Kathy and Mo show, Parallel Lives. I did Search for Signs of Intelligent Life. I got a grant to do my own show. They got a grant to have me do my own show. Then my show that was at the HBO Workspace, is that's when I got asked to audition, go to a cattle call for female comedians who did voices. Okay. And that was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's when they, they just said, we can train her. But I got thrown in. It was crazy. I just literally got thrown what in. Was, put on. And what was it for? Muppets Tonight. Okay. <laughs> I pretty much was waiting to be fired every day. <laughs> I just practiced. I brought the monitor. They, they got me a monitor wow. and a camera to practice in my room. I watched everybody. I took notes. I studied. Um, Jerry Nelson, bless his heart, would ask me to write hand when nobody wanted me. They are like, what? He's like, look at <laughs> I got in my armpit, eh? Because <laughs> when you're doing the, the two hands, the person yeah. is like right underneath the armpit, yeah. And I met Paul Rudolph there, so that oh, well. show changed my life. My husband, <laughs> you know, he would have us come in and sing, and that I can't even believe that happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still can't believe, but I just, I just had to train myself. And um, there was puppeteers on set like Drew Massey and stuff that would help me. And John Kennedy, mm -hmm. I've known John Kennedy forever. You know John Kennedy; he's fantastic. <laughs> My buddy, pal, we made these together. This is actually a cast of Phil. <laughs> we made the ones are paper mache. Oh, okay. This one's. <laughs> Flying cookie. <laughs> well, you go in and you had to prepare a song and a monologue. And just like a regular audition for mm -hmm. a show. So um, my monologue is my two-minute Wizard of Oz because it showed <laughs> character and then I sing at the end. And then, uh, but you, like, so it, they were seeing 10 people every half hour you know, and they were putting him on tape. And in that room was Bill Beretta. And I got through my Wizard of Oz and I said, now I'm going to sing. And he says, that's not necessary. Like, sit down and tell me why are you like this? <laughs> why are you like this? What's wrong with you? Or no. And then they had me put on a, a puppet, um, a Muppet, which was, he much made me almost pass out. And then we had to talk again. And had to do the alphabet. And then he said, thank you very much. And then I waited 
like then I, I was like I guess this didn't happen and I waited a week and then I got a call back and there was 50 people at that call back or maybe no maybe it was like 100 and they were bringing people in 20 at a time in the hallway and then at that audition I met Brian Henson, Henson Martin Baker Alan Trotman was there and um, Bill I think was there and then we had to do an improv scene in a mirror with a puppet I did my improv with Alan Trotman who by the way is my dearest friend and he plays the other half on the splash and bubbles Alan and I share that character so he does all the body movements and everything and he helped me with programming and stuff we are one he helps me with that and flow he's just wonderful we're really close so and then then I didn't hear anything for weeks and I was like oh no and then um, I get a call saying we'd like you to be part of this and I was like what I said oh I think I'm so happy and then they said to show up and they was like a week of them figuring out characters and I walked on for my first day and they were brainstorming and it it was Frank Oz and Kevin Clash and Steve Whitmire. And yeah, I thought I would just vomit Dave Gold and me. And they're sitting around and they're like, oh my God, why am I here? And they're even like, who is that? And I'm like, oh, maybe they just, I don't know. And I had a fish purse at the time. And um, I had this bubblegum plastic brain, that plastic brain, that bubblegum came in, but I used to put ideas in it after I ate the bubble gum and they were trying to figure out they were trying to come up with an idea for an alien they am like what if it was just like a brain and it's probably don't have a brain here and I'm like the only first time I spoke I have a brain in my fish and they looked at me like who is that what she has a brain in her fish like do we acknowledge that or I'm here and then I pulled this brain out of my fish and I gave it to Kevin Clash and he just looked at me Oh, like he was like, oh God. But oh, there was one more callback. That's right. Before that, it was between me and Louisa, who was from the Groundlings. She was a really talented improviser, beautiful blonde, talented improviser. And me and my overalls and my tick lunchbox. And um, we had a half a day of training with Bill Beretta. <laughs> and they went to lunch. And I didn't have money for lunch, so I didn't go with them. I brought my own lunch, my peanut butter sandwich, and my tick look lunch box. But while they were out having lunch, and I'm sure she was going to get the job in my mind, I practiced in the monitor. So when <laughs> they came back, I'd been practicing for an hour. <laughs> I I'm like, Bring it! So. <laughs> That's awesome. I discovered, like, Everything that I don't know about puppetry. <laughs> when I got, <laughs> how about this? When I got, um, when I got hired on Muppets Tonight, I immediately joined the Puppetry Guild of Los Angeles. You know, because mm -hmm. I thought this is an art form. You know, I just want to dive in. And at my very first guild meeting, I took my mom. Um, uh, Philip Huber was there with Taffy. I don't know if you never seen him, but he had this little. He was doing the marionettes, and um, he's just brilliant and genius, as is Ronnie Burkett, another marionettist. And then you start following. Then you become, like, fans of all these, you know, tabletop. Then I, like, yeah. saw um, Tim Legas took me to um, an elemental show, which was um, James Godwin, and he had Rudy, his plant, and it was tabletop, and he was making things holy cow, this is puppetry. And then I saw, um, you know, Jim Nappy do his shadows. And I was like, this is puppetry. And you just keep going down, like the falling, seeing all this incredible stuff. And, you know, people just making you care about inanimate objects and things like that. <laughs> so when I first went to the O'Neill Puppetry Conference, I cried like a baby. Like I sobbed because I felt like I'm just now finding this. Where you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah I can relate to that because it's like, um, because I I went to my first puppet festival a few years ago. I think it was like twenty 
14 or 13 or something like that. I had never been to a puppet festival or anything like that before. It, yeah, it was really different because there was, you know, there was somebody doing a film workshop and there was somebody doing um, like a character workshop where you like put pins all over a foam ball and stick it on a glove. And there was, there was lots of different things that I had never really experienced before. And so that was, yeah, I, I relate to that. And there were marionettes, lots of marionettes. And um, so, yeah, that I can, I can totally relate to that. Cause I was like, Oh, that, that's a puppet and that, and Oh, that. And, <laughs> and then um, the puppet behind them, like Jonesy and, you know, I, I, I can't even, honestly, if I had to just list all the, genius people that I've been in awe of. I always get shy. I don't feel like, oh no, I don't, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful on a daily basis. I pinch myself that, you know, I get to do what I do. Um, but I mean, we, that's, you know, television puppetry is just any teeny little bit, you know, um, and like again, I, I I'm glad that I have being able to reach people with um, on that level. But I go out every day in my community. Some people say, "Oh, I want to be on this," and you know, we got to figure out how to way to generate income. But most of all, you can find it. Don't wait for a phone to ring or an audition to happen. You have to create your own work on it constantly. You right. know, personal um, projects. Yeah. Yeah. Don't it's make been, me get my journals out. They're all <laughs> over the place. I keep filling them up. <laughs> I have those too. See my Carol Burnett autograph picture behind me. Ooh. That's okay. Do you see her? Yeah. That's Paul's bar talk, I think, anyway. <laughs> and then I get that face up there. Woo! I love uh, Carol Burnett is my hero. Hero, hero, hero. And she um. When I was growing up, and here she was a female, um, making everybody laugh and bringing love and light and joy to yeah. characters. And um, I know what she did to my family, you know, sitting down with three generations. And um, we had some hard times. We had a couple hard things happen growing up. and But for that moment, you know, I live for that one moment a week when we could all sit down and laugh and spread joy together. And I think, I think puppets sometimes they, um, they give you a permission slip to collaborate with your spirit. They give you a permission slip to be, you know, Jan, when you came to Sesame street, everybody has the same reaction. The mm -hmm. minute you come through the door, you become five. Right. <laughs> and I feel like, I think it's, I think they engage in your imagination a lot more than people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I think so. Yeah, because you're like they because they they ignite that child inside, the young and the young at heart. Mm -hmm. so I think it just make it, they disarm people. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Unless you're afraid of puppets and clowns, those right. kind of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um it's it's a little bit inexplicable in a way. Yeah. I mean you can you can kind of explain it, but at the same time it's like it's there, there's something about it that that has no words, and there, yeah, yeah. And I mean, some. I mean, and also too, it depends on your environment. I mean, like for me, what what gets me every time, like when when whenever I visit the hospitals or you know you're in a situation where you're engaging, where but when a child hugs your arm. Mm -hmm. feel their passion and their heartbeat next to your hand. I always use, like, when I get like that, I, when I get through an emotional experience, I always say, it was a soul hug. But you honestly feel like you, it's like an honor, like you're being blessed. So that would be my goal, is every, to every week do a radio show with a band. My other one is I want to have my own minute, uh, I want an art truck. Mm -hmm. Leslie and I want to travel all over bringing arts to kids in the neighborhood. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Then I want a miniature golf course called Lolly Land. 
It's a be perfect. A flash camp for kids, but slash miniature golf course. Camp that would be kids. perfect. Lolly Land. Yeah, that's what it's called. Lolly Land. Land. I like that. Yeah. I would go to Lolly Land. Hey, could I be in the in the lemon heads? I mean, I'm kind of. The red hot lemon heads? Yeah, because well, I mean, I'm yellow. Lemon, well, they're an actual band. Oh. Like full on music and such. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I, you, think, well, I can play guitar sometimes, but it's usually made of cardboard. Yeah, you have to use real instruments. Oh, okay. No worries, but you can sing backup. Oh, oh, backup yeah. I, I like song. I like music and singing. So there you go. Yeah, that'd be fun. Mm-hmm.